Okay. Welcome, everybody. Uh, so, a couple of things. So I was looking at the... Um, let's go ahead and jump in this clash, but... Uh, but, um, I was watching the first video from today, and yeah, so I gotta keep an eye on lag. I mean, I was noticing that it was starting to have some issues when I was recording. Um, also, apologies, I'm still can't, trying to get the best balance between hearing my heavy breathing or not being able to hear my mumbling, so, you know, we'll, we're still working on that. But, anyways, we, um, we welcome to session two of the clashing. Uh, let's see, oh. Jeez. Whoops. Actually, hold on. That's embarrassing. Coding game. Jeez. I'm sorry. I was uh, uploading. There. Is it good now? Okay. Sorry. That was my YouTube channel. Um, I was uploading that really choppy video from earlier. So, anyways, let's get into it. So this one, uh, you get a character C and a string S. Your task is to print the sum of all the indexes of C and S. The index of the first character is zero. Example, C equals zero, S equals hello world. Oh, O, oh, C equals O. O is the fifth and the eighth character. Index four plus index seven equals 11. All right, so. I list <laughs> sum equals zero for char and oh and then I'm also gonna do index equals zero for char in s if s equals equals um, c I list dot append actually I don't even know if I need that um I want it to be index, but really it would just be sum plus equals index. Index plus equals one. I think. And what's the output? Yeah, just the total. So let's see if that works. No. Oh, um, do a character string. That's right. Sorry. If char is equal to. All right, sweet. So we got it. Passing everything. Now let's shorten it up. Um. Don't need math. Okay. Uh, um. We don't need i list. We do need index, though index can be i. There we go. Take out the spaces. Shrink it up best we can. Now this, yeah, I was gonna say you can't. You need the spaces that and the if. Um, so yeah, I need keywords. Okay. Yeah, I like it. Let's go with that. Ninety-five characters. All right, cool. Let's do another. Sorry, I just want to double check and make sure that I'm actually sharing my code clashing, not my YouTube channel anymore. All right, and let's see. But he said he might pop on today, do some coding. That'd be really cool to do some like some code collab clashing. But oh, I'm still getting used to being able to invite other people, join other things. And another th reason I think that my computer was all laggy is because I have, you know, a couple of my other projects open 
too often and I'm still working on my C++ stream that I'm going to do uh, for OSCS so uh, my other project the tutorial anyways I'm just procrastinating on finding or on researching make files <laughs> to be honest because I mean when I went to CSU they provided us with the make files and really good ones too like you could make clean make tar you know just normal make and it was cool you could either make a tar file of all your C++ files you could remove your previous uh, compilations with make clean and then just normal make would compile your your code so but since I finally did crack open my C++ textbook <laughs> um, the first thing they do is they tell you to download uh, Visual Studios and this is from the maker of C++ so it's uh, yeah but being able to do it in, in, in Linux is very important so I want to make sure I do include that when I make the C++ video so anyways okay what do we have here the game mode is reversed you do not have access to statement cool Brian is in the kitchen Brian is in the bathroom Wow, okay, so Okay, so it looks like we have some rooms and is this a coordinate? Or I think this is an index, so What's that first one? So you're provided with the house. And you're trying to find where they are. Okay, so kitchen. Oh, wait a minute. So I'm not sure why you need the first two inputs. You're just finding. Oh, okay. So this would be tricky. Um, I'm gonna say all you would really need to do to solve this is you have Brian, and so you would go into the let's see height width. Oh, okay. That makes sense. You know height width um, map line. Um, we do room equals, let's default it to kitchen, kitchen, because in, Brian is in the, we're also going to need a return string. Oh, whoops. Come on. Alright, cool. So basically what I was looking at is we just need to find the index of a capital B. Like once we find that, then we need to check the surrounding chars. And if they equal, you know, we have all the different conditions are kitchen, bathroom, which is T. So you'll see in there, living room, L. And then I saw pool. Oh, bedroom is... E. Wait. Now, see, this is tricky. Doesn't look like it matters. It B could be in here, B could be in here, and you'd get the same output. So, based on this, uh, yeah, it's nice that they give you the grid. Although, what's tricky is like this one. It, so, my first instinct would be to check the indice right before and right after the B, and then, you know, but for this one, you have to check it. Um, width away yeah because it's uh it's either plus or minus the width would make it the indice above or below because I mean this is a, just a nice representation of the printout but when you think about it this is terminated by a new line character 
so that might also throw throw an issue with checking those all right so let's um what we could do sorry part of me just keeps wanting to um, record which height and which width the B is located at but um, we gotta do if B in map line now we need to calculate um, the return string so we need to find which room they're in and it could also be the swimming pool let's see or corridor what's a corridor see okay oh Brian's on any of them okay so right away let's say we got to check all the indices left right top bottom and make a dictionary um, room dictionary equals and we're going to base it on no, let's piece together so kitchen is K okay and then looking at bathroom is T Living room is L. Okay, um, bedroom is E. Oops. kitchen just to verify yeah that's K and then living room we have living room that's L bathroom we have for T yes corridor which is C not hallway court and then nowhere um, uh, I want to stay away from adding an asterisk in there because I don't want it to register because we're going to get asterisks a lot um, but if we get so much as any of these values then that automatically assigns room and then we're done trying to figure it out however let's see I'm going to go ahead and also throw up here target equals space just an empty empty character um oh no let's 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 assign it to asterisk and then so if b is in the map line we'll do while target equals equals an asterisk so that'll trigger one, at least one iteration through the loop cuz it is an asterisk um target equals hmm now let's see what I want to do is I'm trying to stay away from sorry let me form an actual entire sentence what I'm trying to do, <laughs> we've got six minutes left. We might not actually get this one, but we'll get close. Um, basically, what I was, let's see, yeah, we're, that's not a big deal. Um, I want to give, I want to calculate the four indices. All right, so I, oops, I1, well, we can actually type it out, index. No, 
we'll keep it I1. Let's see if. Oh, shoot. You know what? He's actually. These need to be calculated in here, but before that, so if B is in math line, I1 equals if I greater than zero. There we go. So, um, I1 equals I minus one. So it's going to be, oh wait, we need, um, no, we need a running index for the whole thing because we have the height index, so that's not, that's not going to work. It's only going to give the row. Um, Alright, now I'm trying to convert <coughs> coordinates from height and width to like a long running index. Because basically what we need to do is we need to calculate, oh, and we might not, we might not finish when we got four and a half minutes. Um, so we need to make the target into one of the four indices. And we, we calculate the four indices whenever we find So the I said, you know, if i is greater than zero, whatever, I mean index because their i is just uh, the height. But we need a running index, and we need that index to increment for every single character. Yeah. For char in map line index plus equals 1. And that's it. We don't really need to worry about i. So I was going to increment index outside of there. Alright, so that's just a little for loop that I mean, it's not very efficient, but whatever. Um, we're going to calculate the index. If index is greater than zero, because otherwise, you know, we don't want to do index out of bounds. Um, I1 equals index um, Ooh. This might actually be easier if char is equal to b, and we'll take this back out. There we go. So we're actually. I just wonder if I should be incrementing that. Let's go ahead and include all this into here. All right. So yeah, we execute this loop only when we encounter where Brian is. And Brian, so the index, okay, yeah, I think I need to increment the index after it all. And then, so yeah, for every character in map line, index starts at zero, and we get our first map line. Yeah, that makes sense. So we want zero to be the first one. And if that's B, if Brian's in the very le top left corner, then we want else. I one equals zero. Uh, and actually, so that's to the left. And we also need to do. I don't know. This is error handling. And actually, I don't even know if it. We don't really even need to do this. Um, we'll do I two equals index plus one. I left, right, top down. Three equals index minus width. I four equals index plus width. Actually, I don't think that's going to work, but um, I list. Um, okay, now we're getting
getting really complicated. Let's see. So index inner equals zero. Um, So we're going to cycle through the four potential indices to search for. And we want to add all these to a list. See, yeah, I don't think we're going to have enough time to actually finish this. Yeah, 13 seconds. <laughs> Never mind, that's, that's good there. But I will go ahead and share my code there because the thinking, like we didn't even get to where we were changing the room. But, oh nice. Someone did finish. Good job. Yeah, we'll go ahead and share the code. So let's jump into another clash. All nice. We got one right away. Okay. Oh, the links. Sorry, the links. All right. Br wow. Brian F to the K is a programming language designed to be extremely lightweight. Your task is to create an interpreter for mini Brian. F to the K, which features three commands. Adds one to the value, takes one from the value, outputs the character representation of the ASCII value. Okay, so um, I'm going to do if C equals equals plus sum equals zero. Alright, actually, wait a minute. So So it has the three commands. So any characters. Okay, so this is really a for char in C. If char is one of the three commands, do something. Dang, yeah, nicely done. Um uh, elif char equals equals tract. And I think this is of a running total, but elif char equals equals that. Let's see. Takes one from the value, outputs the character representation. Of the ASCII value? Let's see, wait a minute. thinking about it the wrong way then um char oh I just did this the other day I think that's right let's see I'm a little confused with this so try to make sure that we don't start at zero. So yeah, we just ignore non character commands. Long line of commands. So adds one to the value. So we're building up there that really long line. Alright, let's let's see. Oh, okay. Return string. Whoops. Yeah, I'm definitely not the fastest on this one. I'm like sixth, even if I get this equals that. All right. So instead of ah, geez, come on. Plus equals char sum print return string. All right. 
get all of them. Nice. Fifth place. That was a fun one. It was pretty cool. Yeah, but look how fast. 49 seconds and 50 seconds. Dang, yeah, that was like right up to the wire. Alright. Cool. Let's do another one. Yeah, because I'm still going for that 500 and I'm only at like 150, maybe 160 by now. Oh, Link. Control copy. There we go. Uh, they've been going pretty quick, but I kind of remembered. I don't know if that helps. All right. You are given three integers, X, Y, and Z. Return X raised to the power of Y, modulo Z. If the operation is invalid, return undefined. Okay. Print. Uh, X star star Y, modulo Z. gonna hit something that's gonna be like no oh yeah dang it um let's see so we got most of them uh, hmm. so if the operation is invalid I wonder how it would be invalid, like if y was negative. If y is less than zero, print undefined. I mean, that's just one corner case that could trigger that. Let's see. Come on, what's going on? Else. Let's try that. No, so that's not the one. Um, what else could make it invalid? Let's see. For example, given that, that, and that, return one since that, that, that. Notice how A times A modulo B equals Oh my gosh. <laughs> Alright, we just got we just got pretty complicated with that. Let's see. It's super large. I'm not even sure how to optimize that. <laughs> yes, nicely done monthly mango. <clears throat> Let's see. And in C too. I need to my next challenge is to do other languages. So but I don't know. I can't imagine doing Java or Java or C are probably the ones I'd do, but in fifteen minutes, nah. I'm not that good. Alright, let's see. So that's one trying to think of what else would trigger an invalid like if you <laughs> um hmm. cuz like you can really modulo anything z can be anything it just or well or z less than 0 oh, let's try it no, that's not that's not it. Um, it shouldn't matter if x is less than zero. Ooh, wait a minute. Because usually it's a divide by zero error, but I can't. I mean, okay, huh? all right, never mind. So we got that. Uh, super large though. Ah, not good at optimizing. Um. Let's see, let's look at how they're building, it's basically like how to calculate a sequence. 
we got it's too big so we need to do it this way okay just change it A's and B's to even just do that um, B is always what's being modulated by times why wait a minute oh no this isn't going to be Let's see there I don't think that's right because oh wow it actually I think that might have screwed up everyone else, yeah. Um, the reason being is because we're not doing this. We're doing the raise to the power of. So A times A calculate a sum by adding we could do this in a loop um, for num in range to the exponent y plus one it's inclusive we would not print that but sum would plus equal let's get out of here this okay now print sum okay so now we just need to fix that think because ex all exponent means process timed out um, to figure out what they mean by hmm. we're really muddling this up just to fix that one case um, so I think this is actually Oh, I know how to see. Print Y. Let's just see what Y is on super large. Is it 20?
could do oops there we go just a placeholder oh wow we're not even doing that So I got all of them except for the super large. And as all things, so... Let me try taking that out. Okay, so it's only undefined when z is less than or equal to zero. And for super large, uh, all right, so worst case, we got all of them except for super large. But to make it optimal for super large and do what they're doing, I almost want to do. Let's print y. Line eleven. Oh yeah. Wow. Two minutes. cow that's it's almost just as bad <laughs> um yeah I'll take a hint I'm not sure if I'll be able to finish it in time um basically what I'm thinking is like if y is greater than well that is like 11 or you could even do like you know a thousand whatever else print this So I think the only thing I'm missing is right here. Um, Cause I would have to have as many of these since it's a times a, it would have to be a times a for however many times y is. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna get it. I'll just go ahead and keep that. Make sure we. Oh no! <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I think I'll just take this as a almost good. I think I'm close on that. It's just a matter of how they have a times a when in here it's a times a as many times as y. And then adding each of these so each one of those a's is modulo by b. So we'd have whatever that was like um like 11,000 or whatever y was. Yeah. That's fine. Thanks so. Appreciate it, but get yeah, it's got to go through that massive test 
87. That's not bad. All right, let's go for another. Okay, now link in the chat. Nope, that's not the whole link. Apologies. There we go. Okay, how are we doing on time? Yeah, this is a pretty good session. I don't know how many. <coughs> Wish it was easier to keep track of like. Cause I can I can do this, but it's like as they've completed. Let's see, I've done one, two, three, four. Four an hour. That's not terrible. It's not great, but I mean, what was it? It was either this morning or last night. I can't remember. They kind of blend together, but I did really good off stream. I got like two of them in like you know like a minute or two each. I was really lucky, but of course that's not the case when I start streaming. <laughs> but whatever. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it isn't. All right, and. Oh, I should have. Well, it's a little late now. Let's say, should have taken a taken a gander. Usually, I like to do that after the end of these. I don't know. <sighs> if you're still in here, um, Tsukabishi. Sorry, I'm butchering that name. No, what would you say for a hint? Because I don't know. Can I? Oh, I think I can from the. Oh, geez. Now I got tons of things. Oh, and that's not making me laugh, is it? Is it? I'll, I'll leave that up for now. We're, we're in a clash. All right, so game mode is reverse. I want to say this is a, oh, what is that? Just a hexadecimal is a four char in input sum plus equals uh, ord char. Is that what's going on here? Okay, thanks to uh, Tsukabishi. Um, I'll take a look at it here after this clash. I, I got it pulled up here. But for this, I don't know, because yeah, it's not hex, because we got Q and we got T. So I'm thinking it's something to do with the, the ASCII values. 
for this we got 40 no oh, let's do so 114 for a1 let's do I want to see what is that the a1 okay and then So, and then special characters, let's throw it out of whack. You got a parenthesis, it makes it negative, and then something, and say mm. huh so now I'm almost thinking if it's a digit it subtracts from the value but but that wouldn't make sense because we're supposed to get 64 here we're getting 114 we could do um, print ord char just to kind of see like what each of those are. We've got 65 and 49, so that's the ASCII values of both of those characters. One is a character and all that. Um, wait. Oh, hold on. 65. So maybe sum equals ORD input position zero sum minus equals int of input one let's try that no not quite we got the first one and a few of them alright so Now I'm thinking it's something to do with the digits. Wait, which one is test two? Expected seventy four. See, I'm almost wondering, no, because uppercase, lowercase doesn't matter, because if we're looking at, you know, test three, we got, that was okay, we actually got 74. <coughs> um, or do we, we, we don't get test four. We found 108, it's expected 128, or 124. Huh. I'm a wee bit stumped. Yeah, it looks like that's what they were wanting. What's really confusing is we got this one right, so whatever the, you know, so the ASCII value is probably like that minus that. You know, it's like 40. And then we went into the negatives. But then here, we have this. Not quite sure how to fix that without hard coding. And I've learned with coding game you don't hard code, it's just not worth it. <laughs> so um hmm. We 
yeah, and I don't even, I mean, I'm also thinking, like, I might change how we're slicing what we subtract, just because this is a four-digit and this is a three-digit, so maybe if the length of the remainder of input is four or more, we add it? So that's what it looks like is happening here. I got it. If length of input, because we only have one letter or one character, let's see, is greater than three, sum plus equals int input sliced that way. Um, else, oh no. <coughs> Did that do it? I mean, that fixed the one. So two, we're still, what's so special about two? Like, we didn't get four either, because that's not a long one. Oh, and we, we lost five? Oh no. Okay, so, right, so we got most of them. We got five minutes. All right, let's see. Yeah, what's so special about an F? We got four, which is a lowercase t. Because originally I was thinking like it, um, capitalization mattered. But we got this one okay. We're only adding one to that, so we're still wanting that that or that ASCII value whatever that character is uppercase or lowercase it actually is dependent and we're getting close like you know if you or wait yeah test two we're hitting 66 so instead of subtracting wait a minute test one we're adding it, right? Uh. Okay, so we're subtracting it with that one. What are we doing with three? Subtracting. And then we're adding on the very last one, so let's go ahead and take that back out. Oh, this one's tricky. Like there's something I'm not noticing with F. Oh, well, let's actually look at that. So we got test two. Let's print that out again. So I want to see how are we supposed to be manipulating it there. So we got 70, and it's expected to add it. So what's so special about 70 versus 65, you know, 100, and whatever that was? Let's do test four. See, that's another one where they're expecting us to add eight. So, yeah, what makes T and capital F different from capital A and lowercase q? Like, is it... Oh, is it because of ordinal... Uh, even versus odd? Ooh, that might be it. Let's see. Because the ord, that's 116. This was odd. So, if it's odd, then we... Oh... Try that here. If ord input zero modulo two equals equals zero.
So we know we don't, this is wrong. We don't need any of that. And go ahead and comment that out. Let's see if that, I might have that backwards. Let's see. Oh, geez. Doesn't matter because we're going to fail every test. Nope. Okay. I, I did have it the right way. Oh, no. What did I put up there? That was it? That was, oh, no. What? Why? <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> you know what? actually passing the other one shoot so why is this one oh we got 18 seconds dang it uh we got close what's wrong with that one i don't know close enough uh got really close all right so that's what what the deal was with the, the first character it was whether or not the ascii value was odd or even you either added or subtracted the remainder of the input. Uh, let's see. Actually, we're still barely under an hour. Let's, let's do one more code clash. I mean, worst case, I want to keep these things around like an hour for when I upload them to the YouTubes. So that's my method behind the madness there. Also, while we're waiting to start that one, let's go back and look at this. So let's see. You said, uh,. You were adding your expression and it wasn't the good one. You should have made a product. Okay, so with my code the way it was here, I was trying to modulo it. Let's see. So and it was only that one condition. When it was it was greater than that. I wish we had the description still. That would have been handy, but um anyways, it was saying, you know, hey, think about doing it this way. So oh wait. Is that still okay? I don't want it to start going. I'm just rambling off here. So let's see how other people did it. So C plus plus. Hmm. Okay, and if we were trying to modulo by zero that's when it was that makes sense okay hmm. so yeah this is where they're getting the three values mod equals that let's modulo well that I'm a little confused That's all I get to go off of. <laughs> Alright, well. Oh, it's, uh, okay, so reverse mode. So it looks like they have... Okay. We need a... Emoji... Dictionary. And then... Doing loud laugh, and that begets us that, and slight smile. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Not what I'm trying to do at all. There we go. Okay, slight smile, and that begets us. Okay. 
stuck out the tongue. Uh, that gets us. What is that? That and the P. Alright, and loud. We already have that. Nothing. Open mouth. I also just realized we're going to have to do like a replace. Oh, that might be kind of tricky. Disappointed. Oh, actually, no, we're not. I, I think I got a way to a way around this. Okay, so, oops. Disappointed is the that and loud laugh stuck out on. Okay, cool. So, um, s list equals s dot split, and we're gonna need a turn string equals that. Alright. For item in S list if item in emoji return string plus equals emoji of item. Else turn string plus equals item. Print return string. Alright. Does that work? No. Okay, um turn string plus equals that. Oh, and then print it to negative one. There we go. Got him. All right. Feel better about ending on you know, four minutes. Okay. Well, good job. You too. You got it. Well, not a whole lot faster, about a minute. So yeah, share the code. That one was fun. Let's actually look at how they did it. Did you use the dictionary? Oh, that was replace. Okay. Yeah. So you could definitely do it with replace and that's a lot that would be really good for if this was short mode too because he's got it or he or she's got it you know very compact yeah see that that is a pretty clean way to do it I don't know I like the dictionary though because then you can see and then you can add it so that's kind of more scalable like that concept so alright but cool well good luck the rest of you I don't really chat a lot in these chat rooms um, all right, and thanks everybody for stopping by. Um, and thanks for the hits, hints, uh, Suka, Sukabishi. I'm sorry, I'm I'm bad with names, but um, your your condition was useless. You just needed to multiply each time in your loop by the modulo. Oh, okay. Actually, wait. Let me look at that again. Is that uh? So like, yeah, in this loop. You just needed to multiply each time in your loop by the modulo? Hmm. Interesting. Okay, well. And this was a pretty, uh, let's see, does it have a description on here? No. Well, cool. Well, thanks for trying to help me out. I, I still don't quite understand it, but, you know, that's okay. That's a pretty narrow scoped one, but, um, nice. All right, thanks everybody for stopping by. I might be back on here soon.
Uh, I'm going to go take a break, go eat something, and then, yeah, I might be streaming or I might just be clashing, so we'll see. All right, see you guys later.